so retardation test on IC engine uh, this test is used for finding the frictional power of the engine okay so what we are doing here the engine is made to retard from a particular rpm to another fixed rpm at both no load and load condition by cutting off the fuel supply to engine and the, and the corresponding times will be noted so uh, what we are doing here we will uh, actually start the engine at no load condition and accelerate the engine to a particular rpm say 500 then uh, we will cut off the fuel supply so that we will see that that rpm will reduce okay so and then we will notice the time to reduce the rpm from say 500 to 300 and then again what we will do we will load the engine load the engine and uh, uh, accelerate the engine to the same 500 rpm and then we will cut off the fuel supply we will again notice that that uh, this uh, rpm will reduce and uh, again we will notice the time to uh, reduce the rpm from 500 to 300 okay so uh, now uh, I'll explain the theory. We have uh, this equation torque equal to I into alpha, where uh, I is the moment of inertia of the system, and alpha is the uh, this one angular acceleration or deceleration. So uh, in this case, since we are uh, decelerating or retarding the engine, uh, we have deceleration. Okay. So uh, alpha can be again written as uh, omega one minus omega two divided by t, where omega 1 and omega 2 are the uh, initial and final uh, velocity, angular velocities and t is the time taken to reduce from omega 1 to omega 2 uh, velocity and uh, i uh, in this case will be the uh, moment of inertia of the brake drum. So at no load condition, at no load condition we will we'll be having a, an equation like this. Okay. Since uh, at no load condition uh, there is no load and only friction of the engine, of the moving parts is there, we could write uh, the equation something like this. That is uh, the Tf, the, where Tf represents the frictional torque, will be equal to I into omega one minus omega two divided by T one, and uh, again can be written as I into two pi into uh, n one minus n two divided by T one at no load condition. Uh, 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 this means uh, t1 uh, is the uh, time to reduce from n1 rpm to n2 rpm okay uh, since uh, there is no load we can write uh, it is tf equal to uh, this equation again uh, what we will do we will load the engine uh, any load okay any load we can apply uh, and uh, same procedure we will do we will retard the engine from uh, the n1 rpm to n2 rpm and the corresponding time t2 we will note so here yeah, as you can see the torque uh, both frictional torque and uh, load torque will be present so tf plus tl equal to this equation you will get i into i into 2 pi into n1 minus n2 divided by t2 so the, these are the two equations and uh, solving these two equations you will get this this equation so uh, so you can see that you can express the frictional torque in terms of load torque and this t1 by t2 uh, ratio where uh, now I will explain uh, these uh, terms uh, T, Tf is the frictional torque of the engine Tl is the load torque of the engine and T1 and T2 are the times uh, taken uh, for the two conditions that means uh, T1 is the time uh, for in no load condition okay T1 is the time taken by the engine to reduce from N, N1 to N, uh, reduce from N1 rpm to N2 rpm uh, at no load condition when the fuel supply or the uh, the fuel cutoff lever was engaged and uh, t2 is the time taken by the engine from reducing from n1 to n2 rpm uh, at the load condition okay and so uh, so once we uh, so here uh, from this equation you can see that uh, if you know the load torque and uh, t1 by t2 uh, you can calculate the frictional torque, frictional torque, and hence you can calculate the frictional power. This now for uh, calculating load torque, uh, we can calculate load torque because uh, we, uh, we are applying load. Okay, so uh, you can see this one is the brake drum. You can uh, if this one is the brake drum, uh, we'll, have, we'll be having the spring balance reading and uh, the load which is applied. Okay, and uh, depending upon the uh, rotation of the engine, either this will be higher or this will be higher. Anyway, uh, in this case, uh, in our case, we will be see that 
the spring balance reading will be uh, higher okay so uh, the net uh, tension tension in this uh, here will be s minus w and uh, that multiplied by that g and into r will give you the uh, this uh, net torque which is uh, that this uh, the load torque will get so uh, this is the okay uh, that means uh, so this equation you have to note that is uh, to calculate the effective load on the engine uh, you have to uh, proceed like this okay uh, once uh, you are uh, applying load we will see that the spring balance will deflect so initial if there is any error that you have to subtract okay so uh, final spring balance reading minus initial spring balance reading minus of okay minus of this thing the weight of the hanger plus load applied will give the net tension or net effective load in kilogram okay so uh, this one is the effective load this this thing this whole thing will give the well the uh, effective load uh, on the engine and means final spring balance reading minus initial spring balance reading minus minus of weight of the hanger plus load applied so this is the effective load on the engine once you get uh, that uh, effective load that means uh, the the tension you have calculated multiplied by g okay here you can see uh, that effective load multiplied by g into that brake drum radius r will give the uh, load torque okay now you have got the load torque now uh, we have to get t1 and t2 okay t1 and t2 I, as i will explained T1 is the time taken from reducing from a particular RPM to particular say N1 RPM to N2 RPM at no load condition and similarly T2 is the uh, time taken to reduce from the same N1 to N2 RPM at loaded condition. So uh, actually uh, we will be doing we will be calculating this T1 by T2 ratio uh, from graph ok. So uh, here I have uh, shown the observation that means uh, what we are doing we are uh, decelerating the engine from 500 rpm to 250 rpm okay 500 rpm to 250 rpm but uh, in single step in a single step not we are not taking the time in a single step we are uh, reducing the rpm in step by step manner okay so uh, this is the observation table this one uh, here shows uh, initially what we will do we will accelerate the engine to 500 rpm then uh, we will cut off the uh, initially uh, the engine is in no load condition uh, so we will accelerate the engine to 100 rpm we will cut off the fuel supply we will engage the that means uh, fuel cut off lever so we will see that the rpm reduces so we have to notice the time taken for uh, engine to reduce from 500 to 4, 450 rpm at no load condition similarly at the same no load condition again you have to uh, accelerate the engine to 500 rpm and uh, notice the time taken uh, to reduce the rpm from 500 to 400 in this manner what you have to do uh, each time for no load condition uh, the time taken for reduce the to reduce the rpm from 500 to 450 500 to 400 500 to 350 in like that you have to notice okay those that times you have to notice here not down here at uh, uh, right here and uh, Similarly, you apply a load, okay, any load, uh, same reading you have to take. That means you have to take the time from 500 to 450, 500 to 400, like that you have to take. Okay, and uh, now uh, what you have to do, uh, you can plot a graph uh, like this, okay, that is uh, RPM versus time graph for both conditions at load and no load conditions you can plot and uh, you will definitely you will get this uh, curve like a straight line like this with uh, load condition like this and uh, at no load condition like this uh, and you can see that uh, for uh, this one that means uh, see this is these are the rpm values you can see here these are the this will be the time in uh, seconds you can plot in x axis so now uh, what you will do 
uh, once you'll get a graph like this and once you get a graph uh, like this you have to take any uh, rpm range okay any rpm range you can take so i am i took here from 400 to uh, 300 that uh, for for that particular rpm range what is the time taken for at a no load and load condition that will be the t1 and t2 so here you can see here you can see uh, this one this is the rpm range 400 to 300 and corresponding uh, t1 is this one that means uh, this is the t1 similarly at load condition the the time taken to reduce from 400 to 300 is t2 so uh, this is the t2 so uh, from graph you will get the t1 and t2 uh, that you can substitute in this in this equation here uh, to find the uh, frictional torque okay so again uh, you can find the friction tf you can find from once you get t1 uh, by t2 you can find tf from this equation finally to calculate the frictional power we have this equation which is uh, 2 into pi into n into that frictional torque divided by 60 in uh, if it is everything is in si unit that much watts you will get okay and again here you have to notice that this n n is the uh, rpm that means uh, initial rpm if you have accelerated the engine to 500 rpm in both load and non load condition that is the rpm you have to substitute here okay uh and and uh, one more thing uh, from here uh, itself you can see that uh, since t1 is the time taken uh, for the engine to retard from n1 to n n2 rpm and uh, uh, t2 is the time to retard from uh, n1 to n2 rpm at the loaded condition definitely t2 will be less than t1 or you can say that t1 will be greater than t2 okay from the graph also uh, it is it is clear okay